What science is and how and why it works. In one of your books, uh, you've mentioned that you uh, were a vegetarian uh, and your wife also, I think, was a vegetarian, but it was very hard to sustain that in the field. So how is your vegetarianism doing now? Are you still vegetarian or you quit that? Um, we, it, it fell apart. Each of us were vegetarians for about 30 years. <coughs> it got very complicated with our kids mm -hmm. because we decided if we were all, Oh no, don't eat that. It's, it's immoral. Think about the poor animals. Think about the planet. Think about all of that, that we were afraid that if we, that there was the danger, this would make um, meat eating very tempting and seductive and exciting for our kids. And the minute they grew up and got away from us, all they would do is exactly the opposite because this was the thing they were never able to allow to have. So we decided we had to be a little bit less uh, doctrinaire about it. So we never had red meat, you know, ma mammalian <laughs> meat in our house. We ate fish, we ate chicken, oh. and we switched over to that. Um, you know, not a lot of that. We're still mostly vegetarian, but we decided that there was the danger either they would become like crazy fanatic meat eaters and they would go out on the weekend with their shotguns and try to shoot moose and cows to go eat or else they would stay vegetarian and be the type that somehow this meant that they were they had better souls yeah. than other people did because they like okay this somehow or other we're gonna mess this up and this is not gonna turn out well so you know what we're going to eat a little bit of chicken, we're going to eat a little bit of fish, we're not going to be quite as crazy about this, so that hopefully they're going to turn out to be a little bit more reasonable. The experiments you did in your lab, especially with stress and mice, uh, I mean, it's not very pleasant for those animals. And if you feel sorry for them, uh, and, but you're doing experiments on them, how did that cope uh, in, your, uh, in your head, like with your consciousness? And the baboons, I mean, you're shooting you know, them, it, experimenting it, on them. I was shooting them with anesthetic. <laughs> you know, with the baboons, it would get to a point with the science where it would say, wow, I could really understand what was going on right now if I could take this guy and take out his adrenal glands. But I'm not going to do that because not only do, like, I love this guy, I, I knew his mother. I studied his grandmother in the early 90s. You know, it, it was, you know, but in my laboratory work, I killed a lot of animals under bad circumstances related to stress, related to neurological diseases. Um, I was already a vegetarian at the time. I became a vegetarian when I was 14. Um, and it did not seem like a contradiction it seemed like the logical response to it. I was not killing animals because I was making money in the meat industry. I was killing animals because there were diseases I was trying to cure. And this was balancing, here's two different principles. Okay, I will work very, very hard and make sure, really do as good of science as I can to make sure that I'm not killing animals for stupid reasons um and at least when i go home and have dinner i'll have tofu instead of steak um it's just trying to balance things a little bit you know you do what you can related to that few years ago on a committee um in washington where we're the ones who decided that it's not possible to do medical research anymore on chimpanzees. Mm -hmm. That it had to stop in the United States because it's immoral. Um, okay, so I did awful stuff to rats. I don't eat hamburgers. Okay, but I eat chicken and I kill chickens, but at least I helped a bunch of chimps not be experimented on anymore. You know, you, you balance what you can do. 